Pode ser? Pode ser? I will suggest to you for those Bali students that the strongest ecosystems on earth are diverse. If you have a school that is all black students, you don't get the full perspective. If you have a school only Spanish students, you don't get the full perspective. Or white students or Asian students. And so today I'm going to show you that even though I'd like for you guys here to stop the talking. Even though we are different and diverse, we are unified and we need to be unified. Agreed? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask Mr. Romain to do the scripture for me. Uh, John 8 and verse 32. And then you. The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 8, verse 32. And it reads, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads, close your eyes, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here another day. And we thank you because you came here to unify us, Lord. You said in your word that when we become one with you, just like you are with the Father, Everybody will know that you sent us. So please allow us to get to that unity. Allow us to become one body, one mind, one family that can walk through this earth and actually do a difference. Help us to understand how we are all one and unified through this chapel, Lord. Even though we might have different mindsets and different things, we still can contribute can, so that we can create Yes. All right. Mr. Mark, are we ready for the song? It's, we have to turn. I'd like for you guys just to listen to the song first. It is eight minutes and five seconds. I could be wrong. Uh, and then we'll proceed with the experimentation. All right? <clears throat> while, we're waiting, while we're waiting on the song, I'd like to ask someone in this audience. The Bible says that God made man. It never said that God created man. It said God made man from the dust of the earth. Anyone from any class, how do you know that man came from earth? What empirical evidence do you have? Yes, genius. What? So, like, when you take a shower, like, uh, say, you, like, you like wash your leg, mm -hmm. there's like dust that comes off. Very good. That means somebody sweat that day. And guys, if dust doesn't come off you, something is wrong with you. So don't laugh as if it's only him. That's what I don't want you to do. Very good, sir. How else do you know that God created man from the earth? Based on, you know, they say, they say religion doesn't deal with science. Yes, uh, Sister Rachel. Oh, give Rachel to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. um, the human body is mostly made of carbon, and which is the same material that the earth is made of. So you can... Um, when a person dies, you can break them down and make them a diamond. Very good. With like the same thing as charcoal. Very good. In other words, an adult human and women in New York are doing it. They refuse to bury their loved ones like a guy like my size. You could compress my body into a pure diamond and it's carbon. Very good. From the dust of the earth, the Bible said it. What else? How do we know? that our bodies were made from earth. I hear over here, he said, dirt on your knee, carbon. Uh, we need certain, oh. 
we need like certain minerals in our body, like iron, for instance. Uh, we need certain minerals in our body, like iron, to live. And by the way, guys, all these elements are in our bodies. So God in his wisdom made us from the earth and put in our bodies what we need to exist because we came from earth. Empirical. What about trace elements? For example, for women, if you don't have iodine, you have goiter in your throat. Everything that's in the earth, most of it is in your body. You could say that you're in electrolyte balance. Very good. Very good. Nice. Okay. Next thing. We're ready? But it's not. Uh, can, I, can they see it? Okay, no problem. Thank you. There is God. Is it a coincidence that 70% of the earth is water and so is 70% of your body? At this time, I want to do a little experiment with all of you. I want you to check to see today if you are dehydrated with just a simple skin test, a finger test. And so I'm gonna, you, all you need to do, I'm gonna show you on the video, I want everyone to do it. All you need to do is just stretch out your finger and, oh, I think it worked, yeah, let me see. Just take any of the fingers and at the top, you squeeze for three seconds and if it stays there for more than three seconds, you are dehydrated. If not, once you are hydrated, and that could impact your learning. That could impact. So, Mr. McDonald, show the video for me. 31 seconds. Dehydration check. To see how dehydrated are, you have to squeeze your fingertip right here. And if it goes back down, you're hydrated. If you squeeze it and it stays up like this, you're dehydrated. This is known as the skin pinch or skin turgor test. The more hydrated you are, the more elastic your skin will be. And it will bounce back immediately after pinching it. If you're dehydrated, the skin loses elasticity and it takes a while to return to normal and it's more likely to tent up. So everyone first, water. I want you to squeeze that finger and see how, for three seconds, three seconds. Can you, my, right? And see if it stays up, if it stays up for three seconds, you are dehydrated. All right. Anyone sit for three seconds? Ah, so water is life. And guys, instead of drinking all the sodas, you need to in ensure that that 70% stays. Squeeze it if it stays up. Experimentation. Very important. Let me see how many of those who stayed up for more than three seconds. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah, so you, you got to drink more water. All right. First one. Now, I, I want the camera to be on me. Second experiment. All right. Now, is everyone looking? All right. So I'm going to do something called, this is how we are programmed. I'll show you that we are diverse, yet we are unified. Ready? And I want everyone to do You want to take off your mask for a second and do it, or do it and then tell me what you see. Mr. Romain, I need the numbers. Mr. Raphael, I need the numbers. So, guys, Mr. Patterson is going to, I'm going to roll my tongue. And I want you guys to roll your tongue. If you can't, you raise your hand that you can't roll your tongue, and I'll talk to you. So watch what I'm going to do. Watch. All right. If you can roll your tongue, raise your hand. If you can't, raise your hand. Wait, don't move yet. If you can roll your tongue, raise your hands can if you can yes put on your mask we don't want no corona roll tongue mercy <laughs> we count them if you can raise your hands how many do we have 31 and 28 okay put your hands down 
If you cannot raise your uh, roll your tongue, raise your hand. If you cannot. Guys, raise your hand. Look at, look at how interesting genetics are. Sarai cannot roll her tongue, but Layla can, even though they are twins. See that? Five. Uh, uh, Mr. Iris, how much did you get over here? You have to call it. Guys, raise your hand again. Raise your hand again. Cannot. All right. Ready? Notice, guys, even with the twins here, one can roll, one can't. Is anything wrong with the person who can't roll their tongue? Nothing is wrong. Yet, in diversity, is what makes us unique. What we do know, as science will tell you, is that the majority of people can roll their tongues so they carry the dominant trait. Those who can't carry the recessive trait, but nothing is wrong with them. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. Now, next one. And this one, I'm not sure. Next one, I'm going to work on it. To do. I, don't, I want to make sure that they can do it. Now, watch me. My ears are detached. As you can see, satellites. Now, some students, their ears are attached. All right? If your ears are attached, it means the pinna comes all the way to your cheek. If your ears are detached from you know, or take your phone and look at yourself. Take your phone and look at yourself. If your ears are, are at detached, raise your hands. If your ears are detached, that means your pinna is, is, is off. Call it from Mr. Romaine. We're counting. All right. We're counting. The beauty of diversity that is unifying. All right, Mr. Romain, the thing is, some of you don't know. The, guys, you, this part of your ear has to be all the way to your, the side of your head. That's called an attached ear lobes. Attach, or if it's off, it's called detached ear lobes. All right? Guys, if you want to find out, I give you permission to take out your phones and look at attached and detached ear lobes. Mr. Romain, how many do I have? That's the problem. All right, I'll come back to that one. Agreed? Everybody good? I'll come back to that one. All right, the next one. If you are right-handed, raise your hand. All right, put your hands down, the majority. If you are left-handed, raise your hands. If you are left-handed, raise your hands. Mr. Mr. Romain, count them for me. Hmm? Very good. You raise it, raise it. Hey, for both, for both, yes. All right, we have one more, three. If you are ambidextrous, raise your hands. I have one. Cool. Cool. Now, put your hands down. Guys, I want to tell you something about left-handedness. There were times when left-handed individuals were killed for being left-handed. Teachers, teachers actually beat them and said they're demons. Because the majority was what? Right-handed. However, 
guys, know yourself. Wait, wait, wait. I'm waiting until they finish. The most, one of the most powerful groups on earth, the world's greatest leaders were all left-handed. Every single one. Winston Churchill, all the way down to Barack Obama. Ronald Reagan, well, yeah, he's a great man. <laughs> Mercy. All right? Notice now, whether you're right-handed or left-handed or ambidextrous, is anything wrong with you? You're fine. And guys, what, what the science department wants you to know, you must embrace who you are. Don't create division. We must create what? Unity. All right, righteousness. Now, next one. Um, so I have a question for everyone. Here's the question. If I said to you that, let me use a person. If I said to you that Jadalyn, if I said Jadalyn marry a man with blue eyes, are you with me? How do you think this man would look? Anyone? Oh, look, look, look up his ass. <laughs> All right. So if I said to you that Jay didn't marry a man with green eyes, how do you think he would look? Look, 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 look up his ass. Uh, we just hear like Jesus, right? <laughs> Mercy. All right, if I said Jaden marry a man that one eye is green and one is blue. All right, cool. All right. Um, guys, know thyself. So I'm going to show you a couple of pics because some of you might know, some of you might not know. <clears throat> But on earth, on earth, the most, some of the most beautiful blue eyes are in people who are as dark as night. The assumption, so now I'll show you the pic because we're about empirical. Mr. McDonald, let's show you the pic. I got to say about that is, hallelujah, finally, somebody want to talk about my mama. Oprah Winfrey plays the daughter of Henrietta Lacks, the woman who transformed modern medicine and had no idea. To this day, many have never heard her name. I started asking people, do you know, have you ever heard of Henrietta Lacks? Ever heard of? No one. I gotta say about that, I gotta say about that is.
remember, you can't talk. there are 40 young ladies and 29 young men. So if the young ladies are a couple seconds behind, they would have still won because there's more of them. Is every group finished? Because you have to be in order. If you're January, and January 8th, and one is January 9th, they should be behind the person. But trust me, it has to be in order. <laughs> oh, oh, you thought it was this? <clears throat> no, I, no talk. Mm, brethren, brethren. Oh. No talking. It doesn't be straight as long as they, they, they lined up. I, I'm sorry, Miss Elliot. I, my apologies. I see Rachel working hard. Uh, I see someone just about to talk to Jose Hillis. <laughs> Mr. Romaine, I want you to go down the girls for me when they finish and, and hear the months and the days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Young ladies, are you done? Young ladies, are you finished? Are the young ladies done? Young men, are you finished? Miss says, what time it is? No, I know, not out time. Then two seconds, I should have asked. Oh, mercy. All right. So, let's go now. We're going to start with the young ladies first. Ladies before gentlemen. Let's go. January 1st. January 9th. January 19th. January 20th. February 21st. February 25th. March 16th. March 16th. Wait, wait, seconds. Who was born first? March 17th. March 18th. March 28th. March 29th. March 30th. Okay, that, po, po, po. okay, okay, so that's, that's one, that's only one, this is good, this is good. April 11th, April 5th. Yeah, they're not finished, we know, we know. April 11th, April 15th, April 17th, May 1st, May 4th, May 10th, June 19th, June 21st, June 22nd, June 29th, July 7th, July 21st, July 30th, August 1st, August 8th. August 19th. August 23rd. So that's three wrong? September 16th. September 25th. September 26th. September 29th. December 5th. December 15th. October 13th. Oh, man, that's gone. October 22nd. October 25th. October 18th. November 21st, December 11th, December 15th, December 28th. All right, five so errors. We, we, have, we have five errors. Okay, yeah. Let, let's go with the guys. And by the way, by the way, just, just to note that the gentlemen took a longer time to finish, even though it's less of them. Yes, they did. Yes. January 2nd, February 16th. The big. Yeah, man. Hey, yo. <laughs> Four, oh 06, March 25th, April 6th, April 11th, April 18th, April 21st. April 25th, May 12th, July 10th, May 23rd, May 25th, May 30th, June 1st, June 19th, and February 3rd, February 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> One, July 6th, uh, July 23rd, July 7th, Ooh, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> September 13th, September 28th. October 1st, August 30th, Ooh. <laughs> 3, October 11th, 
October 25th. November 5th. November 14th. November 27th. December 6th. December 11th. December 5th. Ooh, four. Guys, and the winner is the ladies. So at Greater, far more organized, more people. But very organized. Ladies, have a seat to me. An awesome, 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 awesome. Guys, February in the middle of the pack? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> in the middle of the pack, February? <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> All right, guys. Take your loss like men and sit down. A June and, Ju and, 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 and uh, May, uh -huh. but to have January and February, don't have <laughs> unbelievable. All right, so, um, so for ladies, awesome for growth, for growth, we need ourselves to divide C E L L S. Not ourselves to divide. We need to unify, understand that even though we might be different, we are uniquely and wonderfully made. Agreed? Now, there's a lady that was born in the United States. I forget what year, but I know she died in 1951. Her name is Henrietta Lacks. Has anyone ever heard her name? Yeah, Miss Ellis, what do you know about her? Okay. So I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you. Yes. Yes. I heard you. Very good. So this lady, she had five kids. Uh, she's a poor black woman, had five kids, and she was sick with cervical cancer. She went to Johns Hopkins University and they removed the cancer, but she died. She died after uh, they removed the cancer. The most unique thing in the world, guys, is that her cancer cells are immortal. They don't die. They will not die. And so all of a sudden, scientists were like, what? She died in 1951? Her cells are still being used for everything, from vaccine cures uh, uh, to medications. Henrietta Lacks, and so they, all of her cell line is called Hella Cells, H-E-L-A. I want to show you a little thing, because Oprah got involved with it, to show, just to show you what, what, what they look like. But the cells are, her cells, her cancer cells are immortal. Mr. McDonald. Uh, I got to say about that is, hallelujah. Finally, somebody want to talk about my mama. Oprah Winfrey plays the daughter of Henrietta Lacks, the woman who transformed modern medicine and had no idea. To this day, many have never heard her name. I started asking people, do you know, have you ever heard of Henrietta Lacks? Ever? No one had. So Something I Winfrey is now determined to change. Myself. The significance of what her cells have meant, I think the world needs to know that. And now they will. Lax was a young mother of five who died of cervical cancer in 1951 at Johns Hopkins where doctors found her unique and aggressive cancer cells were the first to grow in a lab. Henrietta never gave doctors permission to use her cells, and her family was never told. We didn't know nothing about nothing. Like nothing they'd seen before, those cells, shortened to HeLa instead of Henrietta's full name, were used to test the polio vaccine, develop in vitro fertilization, and drugs used to fight cancer, just to name a few. Her daughter Deborah and author Rebecca Skloot finally uncovered the truth. But Deborah died just before Skloot's book was published. I refuse to cry with you, Kristen, <laughs> but I could when I think about Deborah, how eager she was to know about her mother and to have this story told. Henrietta's cells were reproduced in labs around the world, and millions of dollars changed hands. Becca showed me the papers where he wanted to use her name, but the lawyers didn't and want Hopkins to. Hopkins made all that money off of our mother. Hopkins ain't made a dime. 
Johns Hopkins says it did not profit. The family got nothing. But for the next generation, there is a new mission now. You can't help but be proud of what is done. So when you think about that, it's like, okay, something bad happened, but something so much good has come from it. David Lax now sits on a board at the National Institutes of Health, helping to decide just what Henrietta's gene sequence is used for. And I think we ought to think of the Lax family as some of the greatest philanthropists in medicine of all time. They speak around the country. Urging doctors to never forget the patient behind the petri dish. She was a woman. She was black with limited education, limited finances, and look what she has done for the world. <laughs> Rebecca Sklute has set up a foundation for the laxes and others who've contributed to science without their consent. If anyone had taken just a few minutes to listen to her and ask, answer her questions, it would have changed the whole story for her, for her family. A family now taking back its history. I think uh, what we're trying to say is that her life really mattered. A legacy, just like Henrietta Sells, living on. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News, Los Angeles. Hey, NBC News fans. Thank you could stop, Miss Mutt. You see what her cells do? So as long as we shall live, her cells shall continue to live, even though she has died. Immortal cells. And here's where I end. I started talking about the idea that we all came from one. And we need to consistently appreciate each other's differences. Without relegating them or without, you know, being mean-spirited about it. So a couple of years ago, <clears throat> I had a friend of mine who was having some issues with church. And I realized that his major issue with church is that he told me that the reason why he doesn't any longer go back to church is because Christianity is a white man's religion. It wasn't the first time I was hearing it. And I said to him, well, where you got that from? I said, it doesn't matter if it's black, white, pink, yellow. Let's not create division among each other. And he started going through all sort of stuff. He said, Patterson, let me show you. Started with Rome and he's going over. <clears throat> so I decided, you know, because I like the empirical. I said, no, Christian, it was all over the place. I decided to go on a search because I wanted to say, listen, you need to understand that God is real. Jesus is real. And when he comes back, he's coming for a real group of people. Guys, I will tell you this. Uh, Jamaica's reggae star, Bob Marley, said the following, which is prophetic. He says, in the abundance of water, the fool is thirsty. Now, Does anyone know, I'm going to end right here, does anyone know <coughs> the name of the oldest human fossil? What? Say it. Somebody said it. Very good. Say it again, sir. Lucy. Very good. The oldest human fossil. Scientists say she was 3.2 million years old which they then said this has to be Eve remember Adam and Eve the story of course I don't think it's Eve but you know and I don't think she's 3.2 million years old do you know where Lucy was found Lucy was found in Ethiopia yeah now, the reason I'm saying that, because I want you to know that the Greeks and the Romans called it Africa. The name is Ethiopia and Libya, originally. Lucy was found on the Dekali Plain in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the Garden of Eden started at the Horn of Africa and went to Iraq and Iran all the way around. You could drop the United States in that space 15 times.
The United States can drop in the Sahara Desert three times. The way massive it is. Sister White says the Garden of Eden was taken up into heaven. Desert. And oil, of course. So, Eastern Africa, all the way up into middle, the Middle East. By the way, Abraham came from all the Chaldees, which is Iraq. But I want to show you something. Because when my friend was talking nonsense, dividing ourselves because of our color, guys, I guarantee today that most students in this room, because I didn't know up until I was in high school, that there are Christian churches in Ethiopia, original, that are 2,000 years old. These churches were there before any church on any other continent except Jerusalem. And so what they did, they were trying to build a, Jer a new Jerusalem in Ethiopia. They have Christian names, they have Jewish names, and for those of you who don't, who don't know, the real Ethiopians speak Hebrew. Hellenistic Jew speak Greek. Some of them do speak Hebrew now. I want to end by showing you these churches. It was said that these churches were built by God. And by the way, just so that you, let, let you know, the Egyptians called Ethiopian Tenektar, land of the God, land of God. I want to show you the churches. They said, these are the only churches on earth that's built out of one stone. It's called the churches of Lalibel. Could you show it for me, Mr. Lundell? Ethiopian pilgrimage, the rock churches of Lalibela. Ethiopia is in northeast Africa. A high plateau was formed by molten volcanic rock. Isolated within the cliffs is a unique Christian holy site, Lalibela. This cross-shaped church is the house of St. George. The surrounding rock was cut away to leave a 12 meter by 12 meter cross. It is formed out of a single rock without a single seam. The interior was also hollowed out from rock. La Libela has 11 stone churches which are connected by tunnels. They were built by a ruler named King Lalibela in the 12th century. The Christian monarch had a dream. God spoke to him. Build churches of rock, this will be a new Jerusalem. For this new Jerusalem, he reconstructed biblical settings, the stable where Christ was born, the river of Jordan, a cross symbolizes Christ's baptism. And the small hill overlooking the holy site was selected to resemble the Mount of Olives. Ethiopian Christianity dates back to the fourth century. Even today, it remains close to its Jewish roots. Christmas in the Ethiopian calendar is on the 7th of January. As the festival nears, Lalibela's population swells with 60,000 pilgrims. Among them are monks who give open-air sermons. The sacred soil of Lalibela is said to cure disease. Pilgrims take it home for those who couldn't come. As the festival continues into the night, the climax approaches. At midnight on the 7th of January, they greet the day of Christ's birth amid a living recreation of biblical settings and stories. Here at Lalibela, faith is built on rock. I want you guys to know today that our diversity shouldn't divide us. I will say this to you. If our diversity, the way we look, the way our tongues roll or not roll, if those things divide us, 
and they continue to divide us uncontrollably, we're going to be cancerous and we will be canceled. It is important that you appreciate the differences. It's also important that you love yourself. I want to say this to you in ending. <clears throat> the most, some of you, just for history's sake, because the Bible is clear. The Garden of Eden had four rivers, and they're still there. That's where everything started. The oldest known and most complete Bible on earth is in Ethiopia. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Walker shows you could tell you, I went to Rome because I wanted to see these information. I went to Rome, the Vatican, and saw the Ethiopians writing there. Go to London, they're there. Go to France, they're there. I was totally amazed at them. I mean, couldn't read them, but you know. The script. God created man in the Garden of Eden. You know, from the dust of the earth, we have all the minerals and vitamins to show. The oldest living human being, based on science, is in the same spot, same area, from Ethiopia all the way to Iraq, Iran. It's there. Oldest known Christian Bible is there. I want to end by saying I would like for greater to be a place where we learn to appreciate each other, our diversity, be unified without worrying about the minute differences. Do you agree? I will tell you I am not with the division. Let us be cancer cells. Let us appreciate it. And guys, for God's sake, don't call the people in the name based on how they look or what things they do. They're unique. May the Lord bless you today. I hope on behalf of the science department, Mr. Arias, Mr. Romaine, and myself, that you had an, a good experience in chapel today and that it, it caused you to think and to reflect. And just a, 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 a note for those of you who are interested, um, for the last two years, we have not gone anywhere outside of New York. But I'm hoping, Mr. Romaine and Ms. Walker, sometime, I'm hoping that you guys will get a chance to travel abroad and see the spots. It will change you. The last time we went was 2019. We went to all of Europe, but you know. But it's a good thing. Thank you for listening, and God bless. Mr. Romaine, what time? I Mr. C come, Pastor. We're going to pray and then we go, Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for these wonderful students. Be with us now as we go. In your name we pray. Amen. Mr. Stephen. Let's put our hands together again for the presentation done by the science department. A very profound, very informative. And I hope that the words that were expressed here this morning and the examples and illustrations being shown will be a means of also helping us to learn to, you know, to grow better lives on this earth, respect each other, love each other more, and of course, love God most of all. One day we'll have the opportunity when all of us, if we are faithful, will be drawn into heaven to live with all of these wonderful people of various different ages and time in heaven and then in the earth maybe. May God continue to bless you. Amen. Young ladies, you may go first. You won. <laughs> Hurry, young ladies, you have to stay. Those are going to the thing. Unrighteous. Mr. Romain, what time? 108.